Thank you all so much for having me. As, as we think about this topic of, of from compliance to continuous improvement, I wanted to draw uh, a little bit about from our work in California writ large in terms of policy, but also really draw on our experience at the California Department of Education as we've been working towards our own North Star. Um, and it's North Star for Californians. We're thinking about our mission of a world-class education for all students. Um, our right drivers around things like building professional capital, our guiding principles, and particularly this idea of subsidiarity, getting decision-making out to the place where it can be made <coughs> best, but also a reciprocity, that North Star that's been so important to us. You know, and it's, it's just, uh, as I was putting together this presentation, which was feeling a lot of pride in where we've been so far together in California over the last six years or so. If you think back to the 2010, 2011, 2012 period, we were in a period of financial chaos. In fact, one of the first things that the State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Torrenson, did when he took office was issue a declaration of fiscal crisis. We've been working on, as you know, the adoption and implementation of the California standards, the, the Common Core or Next Generation Science Standards. We've been working on and have made some incredible shifts in our accountability systems. And now we're really at that place where our continuous improvement work really needs to take center stage. And I would argue, as, as Sandra was, was mentioning around you know, the system being designed uh, to get the results that it gets, there's also that saying that, that uh, culture will eat strategy for lunch. Um, I believe that culture will also eat policy for lunch if we don't figure out <coughs> how to shift our culture. So I'm arguing that our real North Star definite destination is creating this culture of continuous improvement that will lead us towards one system, no wrong doors, supporting the whole child. Um, a lot of this is built on the incredible work of Dr. Michael Kirst and the State Board of Education and really articulating a comprehensive policy reform framework for the state of California. Um, that framework is being implemented through uh, the implementation of the local control funding formula. As I mentioned, this, this real shift in ethos and culture around accountability and, and continuous improvement. Let's just dive in for a second into that idea of accountability. And I'm, as I talk about accountability, I'm starting to use the word more performance. So we're thinking about performance um, and, and how, we're, how we're doing. You know, where have we been? As you all know, and I see a lot of familiar faces here, we've all been engaged together in a tremendous amount of stakeholder engagement and collaborative work uh, in designing a new accountability system. Uh, that work took shape in, in one format in this report created by the Superintendent's Advisory Task Force on, advice, on, on accountability and continuous improvement, but a tremendous amount of stakeholder engagement conducted by the state board, uh, by stakeholders all, all around the state. Um, as we framed and begun to think about the basis for that performance thinking, uh, that accountability thinking, the key principles that emerged were performance, equity, and improvement, and we're moving in those directions. We talked about, and, and it's, 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 a little, it's, it's fun to think about now because we actually have the dashboards. Let's create a dashboard where we can be thinking about this stuff. And then we brought it forward, and as you all know, we've created, the board created two categories of indicators, state indicators and local indicators, uh, to be able to both reinforce some cross-cutting ideas of, of success and performance at a state level, but also give locals and through subsidiarity, <coughs> subsidiarity locals the, the ability to think about what matters most at a, at a local level. Um, that system built into it this idea of continuous improvement through thinking about status and change moving forward. And then long about is Carrick in the room? Carrick Ashley? When was, what was the birthday of the dashboard? March. March, all right. <laughs> in March, we had the birthday of the dashboard. Oops. Um, and um, we brought forward a cake to celebrate. Um, I was noticing earlier that this cake didn't have any blues or oranges in it, but yeah, it was still a fantastic moment for the state of California as we move forward with manifesting concretely this idea of providing data, as Sandra was mentioning before, thinking about continuous improvement. So as we think about continuous improvement, and particularly that shift to a culture of continuous improvement, 
supporting one system, serving the whole child, there also have been a tremendous amount of accomplishments. And I see Dr. Carapone in the audience, and, and it just was a very happy day when the California Collaborative for Educational Excellence was established, particularly with the mandate for supporting improvements in performance around the state of California. And one of the things they've done, and they've got a series of pilots going, and also I think now over 50 uh, professional learning networks that are happening ar around the state. This is a, a chart from one of their workshops where they define continuous improvement. And as we think about going from compliance to continuous improvement, we know what compliance is, but oftentimes continuous improvement has become a slogan. So it's incredibly important for us to think about that with some rigor along the lines of the improvement science. And here's, here's one definition. At the Department of Education, we decided that we also obviously needed to think about continuous improvement, that it's not something for someone else to do, but also for us to do. So we simplified things a little bit. We, we drew from the work of uh, Dr. David Cooperrider from Case Western University and his work in, with the creation of inquiry and designed a three-phase continuous improvement cycle we call discover, design, deliver. Uh, and I think the, the implications are pretty self-obvious. You can also think about it in terms of assess, support, and improve. And then the board moved forward and, and adopted and has been looking at a system of tiered support where we can be providing support to all districts and schools, focusing in at, at a differentiated level on level two and a level three around intensive support. Um, as we think about that journey from compliance to continuous improvement, we know that the role of the LCAP, the Local Control and Accountability Plan, is particularly critical. How are we planning, how are we thinking about doing this continuous improvement cycle? But where we're at today is that we have a series of of uh, planning instruments that are in use by LEAs. There's the Single Plan for Student Achievement, the Local Control and Accountability Plan, of course. Uh, the uh, Local Education Agency Plan, uh, which has been in use since No Child Left Behind. Uh, and then we've got, at a state level, our ASSA State Plan, which is under development, and uh, the recognition programs underway. Where we're headed, increasingly, is thinking about how we can be integrating those together. So we can be thinking from a toolkit standpoint how are we doing integrated work with, with continuous improvement? Um, already the, the local control and accountability plan, as you know, is in place. New template currently used, being used by LEAs across the street. And we're looking at bringing forward shortly for pilot testing a LCAP addenda that can be used by LEAs for their uh, LEA planning work moving forward. And, and I particularly hope that at some point we'll be able to integrate a single plan for student achievement into that as well. Uh, all of that roots back into the, into the dashboard. But as David mentioned, and as we know that at the California Department of Education, that it's not enough for us simply to be talking about continuous improvement as something for someone else to do. So we've been reflecting a lot on how can we at the department be thinking about continuous improvement as we go on this journey of, towards a culture of continuous improvement serving of the, the whole child. Um, so the first thing that we've done is we've, we've, we've recognized that that cycle never stops. That discover, design, deliver, or if you want to think about it in terms of act, plan, study, do, whatever is the cycle that you're utilizing, it never stops. Whatever level of success that we get to it will take us to a discovery period where we're thinking about where we then want to go forward. But where we've also started to think, and this is partially mandated at an LEA level in the LCAP planning process, is that that continuous improvement cycle also needs to be rooted and thought about in terms of a, a, a cycle of engagement. So we thought about how can we take this work out to our whole department, all 1,500 employees of the department, starting in our executive team, our leadership team, an expanded leadership team, and then finally getting out to everyone and touching everyone with these concepts of continuous improvement, leading to the idea that continuous improvement has to be fundamentally tied to engagement. If there's not quality engagement, then continuous improvement is not going to happen. If there's no buy-in, if there's no ownership around what's happening, what the improvements are, uh, much as in the stories that, that Sandra was relating earlier, we're not going to make those changes. So another way to look at that, and this is borrowed from marketing theory, we need to start with high quality innovation, those innovations that will lead us to great improvements in service. But then those need to be tied um, in a theory of change to engagement. How is it actually going to be, be done and how is it going to be owned? 
and then we'll get the change that we're looking for. In this case, when we're thinking about our own department, a change in our own capacity uh, to be doing work. And that, that multiplication sign is intentional, with the idea being that in this theory that if either one of these are zero, we won't get to the results that we want to achieve. Typically, in education, we're usually over here, thinking about the innovation quality that we want to go to, and not so much over here, or this becomes an afterthought. It needs to be, needs to be an equal. An example of some of the kinds of work uh, that this, these kinds of, of thrusts are, are, are giving birth to and, and initiating is California Labor Management Initiative. And we've, something that we started on about four or five years ago, I've been bringing forward, uh, really happy to involve a set of strong statewide associations and thinking about how can we as labor and management be collaborating most effectively to move change forward because we know when we're not collaborating that change, change doesn't happen. Um, we launched the, uh, the Labor Management Initiative in San Diego in 2015 uh, and really happy to say that there was a summer institute this past couple of days where people have been deepening their thinking and it's all worked because of the key involvement of statewide leaders, so people like Eric Hines from CTA, Josh Bichal from California Federation of Teachers, uh, Jesse Hogan from CSBA, Jai Sukhpasur from CS CSEA, um, all saying this is important and we need to work on it together. Um, the other piece, and I'll close with this, that's very critical for us to think about, just in thinking about that if we don't change the system, we won't make the change that we want to see. If we continue to use the same organizational structures that we've utilized in the past to get us into the kinds of uh, unilateral focus on compliance uh, that we've been used to, we're not going to make change either. And so we've been thinking at CDE around how can we evolve as an organization to get to the kind of change that we want to see. And I'm going to ask everybody to please memorize all these columns. <laughs> um, actually, no. Um, I'm just wanted to illustrate, this is the California Department of Education in 2014, uh, the California Department of Education in 2017, organized like a typical state department in a command and control uh, vertical alignment. Uh, starting July 1, uh, we're going to be shifting to a different format, and this is it's not just going to magically happen July 1, we've been working on this for, for quite a while. Uh, where we'll be organizing into three branches, performance planning and technology led by uh, Carrick Ashley, Continuous Improvement Support, name being, being tweaked a little bit, uh, led by uh, Dr. Tom Adams, and System Support being led, led by Nick Schweitzer, I don't think is here today, who many of you know. Uh, so that bringing together teams that can work on those items within the department. But then critically, organizing into cross-cutting teams that bring people together from throughout to work on things like our system of support, one system whole child integration, integrated planning support, and team advancement. Um, Today, it's showing great signs of, of positive, positive results. We're doing things like really tapping into our own internal resources to engage in high quality professional learning that involves everyone throughout the department. Some other results that have been achieved, and this, I'm leaving the California Department of Education now and thinking about results that we've all achieved together as a result of all these changes that we've been, we've been looking about at is this this move that we've made away from our paper and pencil tests into online testing with improved assessments. Four or five years ago, if anyone would have asked us, could we really do this? We would have said, well, we hope so, but we did it. Um, we've been able to lower suspensions. We've been able to raise graduation rates significantly. And very importantly, those graduation rate gaps have been closing in key, in key populations. And then recently, and I know a couple of the authors of this report are, are here, we've been doing some studying around how are we doing in terms of this experiment in local control funding formula in year three, and the results are mixed but promising. And I think where we've seen is that stakeholders are adjusting their strategies, but some of the key obstacles include low capacity. So that's why this shift to building capacity and continuous improvement is so critical. So a couple of the key lessons um, that we've been learning at the department, that this work requires listening. Uh, and I keep hearing always the words of, of Mike Hurst talking about humility and approaching this work with humility. Uh, this idea of discovery really requires discovery. It means that leaders and everyone give up preconceived notions and begin to think about this work with, with open minds. Um, and this is a, 
wisdom from Dr. Carl Cohen as well that you've got to go slow in this work to really go far. That's how we're going to make it far together. And I think the most important thing for us all to be thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis is that continuous improvement work is not something for someone else to do. Um, it's not work to do that we do when the rest of our work is done. It's something that needs to happen um, all the time from, from all of us. So where are we going next? Uh, in my opinion, as, as Journey Partners, uh, and I really want to thank Pace for hosting this seminar today, we really need to get serious about how we're defining and testing and implementing continuous improvement systems. As part of that, as an integral part of that, we can't ignore the serious intra-institutional organizational changes that really I think all of us need to make to be able to do this work effectively. The organizations of the past are not going to deliver the results that we want to see in the future. And then lastly, kind of a little bit more in the weeds, we really need to be thinking about, and I know the board is, is, is looking at this very carefully, how we're leveraging our SSA plan to really maximize this development of a system of support that will lead us in these continuous improvement and capacity development areas. So I think if we, if we do all that, uh, we have the opportunity and just such a, a blessing for me to be able to be part of this opportunity where we can be thinking about this move to a culture of continuous improvement uh, supporting the development of, of one child and, and one system. So with that, um, I'll close. Um, thank you for, for allowing me to speak to you. Sorry for the, the lateness in arrival. And um, I'll turn it over to yeah. Noah. Yeah. All right. Great.